All right, so we, I've gone, gone ahead and erased the board. And I just want to go over something that uh, when you went through the exercise, we just told you, believe us, this to be true. And we said that after our positively charged particle interacted with this field, its speed at right before it hits the wall here should be the same as when it entered uh, the region where the magnetic field is. And as you saw when you ran through the program, it actually, they had different speeds at those times. Um, and we're telling you that that's just error and it should be correct. But I just want to give more justification and more reasoning behind uh, us saying that. To put the, show the math behind what we mean. And so, let's just assume general, let's just think about kinetic energy. And so, if there is a change in speed in the energy, then kinetic energy final must be equal to kinetic energy initial plus uh, an example of this change happening was there's some sort of power that's acting on our system over time uh, delta t and a good example of what we mean by powers is a big one is it a rocket right a rocket just doesn't start flying and shooting up in the air it takes a lot of acceleration a lot of power to begin its acceleration up and thus increases the speed another example is when you're out driving and you're coming from the streets and going up a freeway ramp you know you accelerate and you thus give yourself more kinetic energy because you're increasing the speed of your car and a way to write out what the equation for power is is power is equal to a force dot in with the velocity. And so a way to kind of break this down and kind of this representation of what power is force times some velocity is if you're on a swing set, you don't kick your feet at the top at the end of the swing. You kick it with the point of fastness speed which is at like you know it's like a parabola on a swing it's at the bottom and that's when you kick your feet so you swing faster and faster and thus it's increasing your kinetic energy so so we could plug this power equation into here um, I just we will just break down this general definition we have um, for this f this force vector f and its velocity vector v and we'll break it down to its components so this is our general equation to represent the power and the force and velocity these are vectors and we're doing a dot product with them there's dot products and then there's cross products um, it's okay if you don't know what a dot product is I'll go over it here just kind of describe um, in general what this would look like look like when we expand out this dot product and so we'll write out explicitly each each part of this vector for the force which will be f of x um, and we'll do we'll do x hat because this is the force in the x direction and then f of y we'll throw in a y hat and then it's dotted with v sub x x hat and then V sub y, y hat. And in a dot product, you want to multiply the terms that are going in the same direction. So in this case, you know, we have this force f of x in the x direction and this velocity v of x in the x direction. And similarly, f of y and v of y. And so these terms will need to be multiplied. And so in general, they'll look like this and this here will then represent in general the power that would be um, occurring to you know propel the rocket to accelerate your car as you're going up a ramp all right something I want to go back to before we keep going on is just kind of go over more of this product and kind of the steps that I did here so a big reason on why you only do uh, multiply the terms that are in the same direction is because if you 
you do distribute it out to the other um, to the other positions but when you do x dot x hat dot y hat it's zero and similarly when you do y dot x hat it's zero and another thing to mention is that in textbooks and other if you look up on Wikipedia or just other ways to kind of how to do dot dot product or cross product or anything they also use uh, I hat J hat and K hat terms this trend this they're the same thing it's kind of dependent on preference I just wrote X hat Y hat so just you know so you know X hat and X they're like connected um, but in this case I hat is X and then J hat is Y and K hat would be if we had Z here but we don't in this in this case so this is just the representation here in general so now let's consider our system and so in this case we're going to consider the forces that are being acted on our particle and we saw that the only forces acting on it is due to the magnetic field which is QVB and so let's just kind of break it down in general try to make make this power equation but representative of the case that we're working on and so I'll write up over here so in our case we know that there's only F mag X and then uh, in the X hat direction and then we have F mag Y in the Y hat direction and that's our system and now uh, we can plug it into here and we also have some velocity VX VY um, I'll write that out just for uh, consistency sake so we'll have some Vx uh, x hat, some Vy y hat. And then when we do this out and multiply it out, we get the same same result here, but let's just sub in that the correct variable names that we gave them. And then we would get power equal to f mag x. Mag Y V V Y. Okay. So this is just now we're considering our own case and this is the setup. And we know what F mag should be. We've calculated these values, you've went through the exercise and you've seen what they are. Um, in case you have it, I'll just rewrite them out up here what they should be. Q V B and then this one minus Q V B. Okay. And now oh actually one I made a mistake here if you we may have already caught on is that it, the, I need to give the correct velocity in my F mag X, which should be B, Y, B, and over here. You know, this mistakes happen all the time, so you always gotta, if anything's ever wrong, just see if you've defined variables wrong or something. And that tends to be the best bet here let me I don't want to be too far it could be off screen so yeah F mag Y should be minus Q B X B. okay so this is what as you went through the exercise these are the values for F mag X and F mag Y Y should be and now let's plug them in so we get Q V Y B Vx minus Qvx B B Y. So you might begin to see that these kind of look the same, but just to make it clear, let's just re rearrange. It's still going to represent the same value, just so it's clear to everyone on why this will 
lead us to zero. So you can see we have the same exact terms on both sides and we subtract them and we get zero. So our power is zero in this system, in our case. So just to like go all in further, let's just plug this back in to what we set up to begin with here where we had be ke final equal to ke initial the kinetic energy initial plus power which we calculate power to be zero times some time and then thus this term will go away and then to go even further let's just write out what this means exactly one half mb f squared one half m b i squared and so in order for th this to all be true and thus to justify on why that the why the difference in speed you guys saw was just error and it wasn't like we were lying to you it's right here where in order for this to be true the mass isn't changing the one halves they're just the same like if you cancel them out and then you know and vf squared is equal to vi squared that must mean vf is equal to vi and this here is how you prove and how we show to y'all at home on why the the speed shouldn't have changed um, after the particle gets introduced into the magnetic field.